Hey guys, I feel like I should have started this video with the Usher song, these are my confessions. Okay, but um, I wish I would have done a series like AIP confessions every week, so I'm just really bummed. But anyways, day 28, but on Saturday I kind of cheated. So I didn't, I went to an event, our chamber dinner, um, and shout out to my boss, Trevor, who won an award for being an awesome entrepreneur, so that's awesome. But um, I ate the meal that was provided, even a couple bites of the cobbler dessert, but I ditched the ice cream because I knew I couldn't have that. But um, everyone asks like how my body responds and how I'm feeling after, like what it's gonna be like when I do reintroductions and how will I know what I can eat and what I can't eat. Um, so I, I felt fine Saturday morning when I woke up or on Sunday morning when I woke up after eating it, but I went to take my ring off and my ring literally like wouldn't go off my finger. It's still pretty swollen. Like the fact that I had to jerk it like this use is usually a ring that goes on and off really easily for me. Um, but it was really, so I'm really swollen. Um, my hands kind of like are sore, not like, I don't know, like they just feel inflamed and swollen. So that was the first thing that I noticed and everything other than that was kind of fine. Maybe I was a little like kind of draining or like coughing a little bit, but none of that really mattered until after dinner last night, which I ate all the things that I could eat according to AIP on Sunday. But after dinner last night, my stomach was so bloated and so inflamed, like painful, like hurting and Everyone's like, well, maybe it's something you're eating now. Just remember, food reactions don't necessarily have to take place like within an hour or two hours. They can take 24 or 48 hours to manifest. But also, like, that's why reintroductions for AAP, you have one serving of the food, and then you wait 48 to 72 hours to see how your body responds to decide if you reacted to it. If you don't react to it, then I'm going to reintroduce foods, and I'm going to have a serving every single day for a week to see if the food can be reintroduced to my diet. So... Right now, I know for sure that something I ate at the party is something that I'm going to react to. Um, I had coconut shrimp. They probably used, there was probably gluten in the mixture that they put on the coconut shrimp. Like, it could have been a variety of things, um, but I do know that there is something that I'm going to react to. So it's going to be very interesting when reintroductions happen. But since I did this, that means I might not start reintroductions on, um, on the 31st because I have to wait until my body is back to normal, um, to what my normal is. So if you're doing AIP or elimination diet and you're doing reintroductions, if you reintroduce and maybe you like I say I reintroduce, I waited my 42 hour, 48 hours and I found a food that I can't have. I have to wait to do another reintroduction until my body recovers and feels better again. So I obviously for me, like I won't be doing any reintroductions until like I'm not bloated. I like lose some of my inflammation in my body. Like I'm going to wait um, because I need, I want to test my foods and get a real response. And if I'm already inflamed and my body's kind of angry with me, my body isn't, isn't going to give the same response. Um, and because I'm, if I'm overloading it, it might give me no response for something that actually is a problem for me. So I want you guys to understand like everyone's a little different and like how I responded and how you respond are probably going to be very, very different, but that's what makes elimination diet so valuable for people that are having a lot of issues is that you remove these common allergens and then one at a time you reintroduce them. You don't reintroduce gluten and dairy and legumes. Like you don't do it all in one day. It's going to take a while. Um, everyone like, Oh, so you'll start eating normal again on the 31st normal. That's my normal, I guess. But um, on the 31st, when I reintroduce, it'll be one food at a time. And like anything could take approximately 10 days for me to reintroduce into my diet. And then I have to wait for recovery. So like the actual reintroduction process could take a very, very long time. Um, I'm guessing with the big foods that I want to reintroduce, I'm going to guess about um, 10 uh, 60 to 90 days for my first group of reintroductions. And like, that's like one spice at a time. So like my first thing, my first couple that I'm going to reintroduce since everyone, everyone really cares, uh, black pepper, coffee, and eggs will be my first three, um, that I'm going to reintroduce and see how my body responds. Um, I have this debate whether I'm going to do black pepper or coffee first or eggs. Um, I think I'm going to do coffee, but if you guys think I should do something else first, let me know. Um, but Remember, like if you're going to try something like this, you have to give your body time. Another thing to know is that if you are sensitive to gluten, like 
to really feel good, you need to go six months without any gluten, um, which I know I probably interacted with some over the weekend, even though I didn't eat bread or any of the big, like, big contenders you would for gluten. I'm sure that I interacted with something and something like that is causing some of my issues, which means I have to have another six months without it there. So I maybe, maybe my reactions will be a little different. Um, so remember any of those foods that are irritant to you, like it doesn't, it's not like it's just out of your body immediately. These things build our cells and create everything that we're made of. So we need time for those cells to refresh and everything to really get it out of our system. So if you remove these foods and you're still experiencing system, like symptoms, it could mean you need more time on it, not that you need to be reintroducing stuff. So like, um, for example, for me, I'm still having some like digestive stuff that I just can't get rid of. Um, and my debate is whether I start reintroducing, but it is my normal. My issue is my normal. Like I, I got rid of a lot of other stuff by doing this. So I'm going to keep that as my normal, like my stable, what it is. And I'll start my reintroductions based on what feels good. If my symptoms get worse, then I'll remove it. If they get better, you know, then I know I can probably have that food. So we'll see. Um, and if I can't eliminate the issues that I'm having, I will try a different uh, approach. So I did AIP, which is very, very intense. It removes a lot of like inflammatory foods. Um, there is also a, um, a low FODMAPs diet. So like foods that are low histamine, um, that would be my next, like my next step if I'm having issues with, or if none of these foods like help me with any of my issues or reintroductions go fine, I'll go like low histamine foods. So I'll remove a lot of stuff that maybe I'm eating kind of a lot of, as Zach would say, you live off of avocados. Avocados are a high histamine food. So I'll actually probably remo be removing them. Um, I actually didn't buy any from the grocery store this week just to see if that is my issue. So like foods that you eat all the time that shouldn't be a problem like avocado. Um, but if you're noticing that like you can't get rid of like digestive issues or these allergy like symptoms or you itchy skin, like eczema, like all of these things are coming from the foods that we're eating in a lot of cases. Like, yes, there's other circumstances, but like if you can remove those foods and then you start to feel better, you have to decide if it's worth eating that food to feel the way you want to feel. So that's kind of where I'm at. I want to feel better. And at this point, I pretty much would cut just about any food out for that, um, especially after like how bloated and miserable I felt last night and I slept terrible because of it. So um, think of all the ways the foods that you eat interfere with the rest of your life and you can make those decisions. So if you guys have any questions or want to know more, let me know. Um, also, um, this is exactly what I'm doing in my 90 day refresh and reset for my one-on-one -on -one clients is that we kind of dig into these things. Some people might be doing elimination diet. Some people, we might be removing one or two things, um, to see how your body goes. Not like a full on inflammatory, like thing like I'm doing, but, um, little steps like that. Also, um, we'll be working on a ton of environmental factors that help you be successful based on the information that I get from you in your health and wellness questionnaire. So if you guys are interested in refresh and reset, I still have um, three spots left and I am closing the doors on January 31st. That will be the last day that I'm gonna take anyone for 90 days one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, and there are three spots in my beta testing and then I probably won't reopen it until March or April. So if you are interested and you wanna get in, now is the time you have two days three days, whatever it is, three days to get in. So 90 days, one-on-one -on -one coaching, refresh and reset. All right, guys, that's all I got. Have a wonderful Monday. Bye.